everybody, it's Shelly Hoffman and I'm here with Bob Wicks, um, the Lysander Town Supervisor. And uh, we're just doing the monthly update. We missed last month, there wasn't a whole lot going on. So we decided to, to see what was happening since, uh, what would that have been, August through October now. So how are you doing today, Bob? Doing fine. Good. Yep. I um, We were talking a little bit about getting ready for the fall, you know, taking our, our summer toys and putting them away and stuff. So tis the season, I guess, right? Yeah, that's, yeah, <laughs> take no step out of our pain in the neck, but uh, I like putting them in, not so that's much. Yeah. So what's been going on in the town of Lysander? Well, if uh, people were up on Mott Road, they can see that that project's been in the works for a few years now, and we're finally uh, uh, right in the middle of it, and it should be completed within the next, I'd say, three to four weeks. Uh, they're doing a the contractor that we have is doing a great job along with our highway and engineer. Um, they put in new drain tiles all the way down. So that road is going to be much, much uh, more dry than it has been in the past. And then when they do uh, go over and pave it, it's going to be a 50 year road. So people won't have to worry about that road for about 50 years. They'll have a nice uh, paved uh, roadway to get on. Nice. I, um, I saw them doing some work over there. I was wondering what was going on. So I'm sure other people have as well. Yeah, they, we sent letters out to everybody. And so everybody should have received those. And uh, they understand everybody up there wanted that project to get going. So uh, they're probably, even though it's uh, torn up quite a bit, they're probably happy that it's going to be completed this year. Yeah. Um, what else is happening? You mentioned the, the parks over at the park. You had some stuff going on. We... Uh, if people uh, drove in, they, they could see that we redid the, the parking lots. That was a project that uh, we completed this year. We're going to, uh, there's a sidewalk there that's been torn up by the um, uh, splash pad. And we're uh, looking to complete that by this year. What we're trying to do is continue to make improvements to the park because uh, it, uh, it seemed a little um, weathered and aged. So one of the things when I came in, I uh, got together with uh, Tony Birkinshaw, the parks supervisor, and uh, we came up with a, with a plan to try and fix some of the uh, facilities there and, and just make it look a, uh, a lot better. Um, the uh, Cindy Clark, one of our volunteers, she's been over putting in flowers on her own. She, she dug them up out of her backyard or maybe she dug them up out of the village. I don't know where she got them. Um, she she put those in near the flower garden and they they look uh, 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 very nice. Uh, also, people will probably see the uh, house that we bought on uh, right that uh, is in the middle of the park. Uh, we've been putting backfill in there because what we want to do is eventually tear down that house and then uh, repurpose that area for soccer fields and things like that so we've been bringing in we've been getting free fill which fill is expensive i mean it's you know a couple hundred dollars a load and we've been getting it free we took some off of Mott road and some other places and we're uh, putting that in there so hopefully we can get the majority of the fill which is thousands of dollars to put in there to level it out and then once we get uh, the grant from Assemblyman Barkley that's uh, going to come through. We'll be able to tear the house down and hopefully uh, do most of the work that we need to do with no money coming from the taxpayers of Lysander. It'll be all outside money, the majority of it. Um, <clears throat> let's see. We're going to continue to make improvements in the park over the next year. We're, we're looking at resurfacing the, uh, the tennis courts as well as the pickleball courts because the pickleball pickleball courts get a lot of action uh, and then we're going to the uh, volleyball court there was probably two inches of sand in there that's well, pretty hard to play uh, sand volleyball in two inches of sand so we're bringing in three truckloads uh, big truckloads of sand and we're gonna um, put new nets up and that should be much much nicer for people to utilize in the spring hopefully we can get back to utilizing some of that stuff in um, in the next coming months uh, and we should have it up and running. Uh, because I think that we we really don't know what we're gonna be doing with this COVID. We really don't know how much the governor is gonna allow us to uh, open things up. But when we're ready to go, we're gonna try and have everything up and running, the volleyball courts, tennis courts, and things like that. 
but we're going to have to shift our emphasis uh, from doing programming. Uh, now we haven't got gotten into the budget yet, but I think we need to we need to shift some money around. So uh, my idea is to make sure that we have nice facilities over there, and then we might. Uh, have to uh, eliminate some of the programming in order to get the facilities up to where they need to be. And then uh, later on, you know, incorporate the facilities once we get that part looking the way that we, uh, that it needs to look. Well, I know, um, you know, I, I've talked to Tony through um, a forum like this, and then I'm on that committee, you know, for the parks and the building that you're talking about tearing down and putting the soccer fields, also more walking paths, which, you know, which is nice. And I went over there recently and I did see Cindy, Cindy, for people that don't know Cindy Clark, she has the greenest thumb of anybody that I know. She's really good with flowers. So, um, so that was nice. Do you think during COVID that um, you, the town took the time to kind of do what it could do because it wasn't being utilized, like maybe freshening up paintings, benches, things like that was those types of things done or just because we couldn't really do anything. It was just, um, just put on a project list for another time. Well, we, <clears throat> what we did was when I came in, when COVID hit in March, I sat down with all the department heads to start saving money. But also I sat down with uh, Tony and I said, look, it, we're not going to be able to run programming. So now's the time to shift some of that money over into freshening up that park and um, getting our facilities uh, in much better shape. Because when we went through, we took a walk through it, it, it the park looked tired. And it was a good opportunity for us to do that because it wasn't um, we weren't able to utilize it the, the way that it's normally utilized. So we were able to get some of the things done because people weren't in the way. But then once people started using it again, it was it looked a lot better. And I have uh, heard from a number of residents that, you know, they like the, the improvements. So we're going to continue to do that because it really does need some uh, TLC moving forward. And we're going to try and bring in some other things and. The things that we're going to be bringing in, like I talked to Tony about having cornhole boards and we're going to try. I, I spoke to Tony about having more um, equipment in there. Oh, and I think Bob got a call, so he will be back in one second, but I'm kind of curious about the cornhole. Got a phone, got a phone <laughs> call coming in. But uh, yeah, the cornhole, uh, I mean, everybody plays cornhole. So I said, look at, you know, when people are in there and they have their kids playing soccer or lacrosse or football and they, and they got to stick around, why not have some, uh, some cornhole boards in there that people can go over, the adults can go over and maybe utilize them or the older kids that are there. And uh, same thing with the, with the volleyball. You know, if you got nice facilities, people tend to want to use them more. But we're going to start looking at uh, the, uh, having equipment in there that we don't have to run, that people can just come and utilize. And the boards, uh, my my daughter and my son-in-law live up in New Hampshire, and they have a, an annual cornhole tournament at their house. They have 130 people at their house for uh, Kentucky Derby, and they have a cornhole tournament up out of, outside. Of, I know it's big here, but you go up in New Hampshire, and they're crazy up there. And but I think if we do those type of things, you know, you have cornhole, you have lacrosse nets, you have soccer, things that people can come in and just use on their own. I think we're going to get much more use out of that park than we have in the past. No, I think that's um, that's a good idea. And I know a lot of people that play cornhole and would do that while their kids are in activities. The going back to the programs and, um, you know, freshening up the park and then bringing the programs back. Do the programs bring money in? People may not know exactly how the programs work. Do they typically bring money in or is it better to freshen up the park well, to use because? Yeah, that, that's a problem. Uh, a lot of the programs that uh, when, we, when I went through with Tony, a lot of the programs really weren't bringing money in. So what we're gonna have to do, <clears throat> now we haven't finished the budget, I'm only one of five, but uh, my idea uh, is to eliminate the programming that doesn't bring in the money. There are, there's some programming that like the pickleball tournament that brings in money. We're going to keep that uh, gems program that brings in money. We're going to keep that all the programs that are uh, revenue positive. We're going to, we're going to maintain them, but we really don't have the luxury of uh, running programs that uh, cost us, uh, you know, we're, we're not bringing any revenue and it, it's costing us because we need to save that revenue in order to 
do the improvements to the park that we want to do. So, so it's a give and take here. This is, this is going to be a very difficult budget year. So we got to look at all of those things and spend our money as wisely as we can. It's kind of like when you have a house, if you have a leaky roof and you have a fence that's falling down and you only have enough money to fix one, you're probably going to go with a roof because it's going to cost <laughs> So, so those are the type of decisions uh, that that we're making right now. You know, I mean, everything has to be uh, what needs to be done now. Where can we get the biggest bang for our buck? But we got to keep the cost down. That makes sense. Can you give an example? What's one of the programs that the park has that doesn't uh, generate revenue? Um, they had some um, uh, children's programs, like the they had a uh, program for rugby, and the reason that one sticks out in my head is because my two uh, granddaughters were involved in that. And that didn't bring in any money. That was, uh, you know, it cost uh, the uh, the park, it cost the town to run that program. So there are a couple of programs, off the top of my head, I can't remember the other ones, but there are, there are a number of them that um, we run that, that just don't bring in, a, in, in any revenue. And it, it's not so much that you have to, you have to make money on them if they're uh, revenue neutral. If if they don't cost us anything, that's okay too. But where you get into where you only have a limited amount of people uh, attending these, like the rugby camp, seven kids, you know, that's that's really not a positive type uh, camp to run. So if it's going to cost you money, you only have seven kids involved in it. Those are the type of things that we're that we're probably not going to run. Um, yeah. No, that that makes sense. I wasn't. Um... My kids didn't do the rugby. I think we did like a soccer camp one time, which I don't know if it generated revenue or not, but to give people an idea. Um, I think it's good that you, you know, that you show that your grandkids participate in them. It's not anything biased against the park. It's just um, with COVID, a lot of businesses, including towns, have to make changes. So it's, um, I see where you're coming from. I, I, I like the park. You know, I mean, I really, uh, when I was a kid, I was the, um, you know, my family didn't have the type of money to send me to these programs. So we had to do things. We played basketball a lot. We played uh, uh, football. We played, um, you know, soccer, things like that. So those are the type of things I want to make sure that those facilities are in really good shape. Volleyball, uh, having the uh, the playgrounds in place. We're looking at uh, extending the um, walking trail. We're looking at uh, developing some other uh, a um like a ninja warrior type um, athletic facility where kids from say six years old to 86 can use them if you're in really good shape. But, uh, um, you know, facilities that uh, can accommodate people from five to 85 is what we're really looking to do. And then as uh, things get better, we can, we can start instituting some of these other programs that maybe, uh, you know, have a benefit to the community, but we can afford to do right now. We can't afford to do things that are costing us money because, um, that, you know, I'll, it's a good segue to get into the budget. The budget this year is going to be very, very tight. I mean, anything from the state, uh, uh, highway funds that we normally get a hundred percent, we're, we're only budgeting for 80% because that's probably what we're going to get. In fact, next, uh, at our next meeting on the 15th, I'm bringing in our county legislator, Brian May, and he's going to talk about the um, state of the economy on the county level. And you'll hear from him. It just, it's not just me. It's, it is not good. So we have to take a look at how much money we're bringing in, and we can't spend money frivolously. Um, there's um, uh, only, from my perspective, we should only be considering things for the budget that uh, are necessities. Now, the park, uh, again, that's an asset. So uh, when we're doing improvements in the park, you're improving upon your assets. So that, even though it's it's not a necessity, you can't let your assets fall apart. But when we start looking at things like we we look, uh, we were looking at a uh, phone system the other day. We need, it, we need to do our phones. Our phones are uh, at least 15 years old. They can't even find parts for this anymore. And that's going to be somewhere between twenty and twenty-five thousand dollars. That's the numbers we're getting right now. In order to uh, put a new phone system in, that was money that wasn't budgeted. We need to do some long-range planning, which in the past really hasn't been done. In ten years, ten to fifteen years, we're going to need a new roof. The roof on this building is going to cost 
probably around $150,000. Well, we don't want to just wait until it's time to do it and come up with $150,000. You know, I want to start looking at 10 years out and start putting monies in reserve. We need a generator here. Um, I knew we needed a generator for emergency management purposes, but what I don't, didn't realize that it's if the power goes down in this building, we just had the, because we were talking about the phone system the other day, came up about computers, which we just did. If the power goes down in this building and that um, hard drive in our computer system shuts down quickly, it can disrupt and corrupt our files to where it's going to cause damage to that. Now, we do have a backup of a, of a couple hours of battery backup, but say for it, and which would allow that to uh, shut down slowly and and hopefully not cause any uh, damage to the system. But say the battery backup uh, failed, and that's happened before. I've had a sump pump where I had a battery backup, and, and for whatever reason, it didn't work, and I had water in my basement. So we got to look at putting a generator in. Well, that generator, that's going to be 50000 anyway. Um, the fuel farm, I was just told by the um, our engineer that we're going to have to do something with our fuel farm. Either we have to put $25,000 into uh, new software for, for an old system, or we have to look at decommissioning the fuel farm and going with the um, the school's um, fuel farm over there, which we can do. We already have a, an agreement with the school that we can use theirs. And that's what I'm leaning towards now. It costs us a little bit more initially instead of 25,000, it costs us 30, but then we're gonna save uh, two or $3,000 a year in um, insurance as well as the maintenance costs. So in the long run, decommissioning that fuel farm may be the best way to go. Now I haven't, uh, made a decision on it. We haven't talked about it yet, but it seems like that's probably going to be our best way. But that's thirty thousand dollars that wasn't budgeted for. Um, the exterior of the building needs some TLC. Well, we were planning on doing that this year, and then COVID came in. We were cooking right along pretty well, yeah. and um, COVID came in, and we had additional expenses that we didn't account for. So we're not going to be able to do that. But that's the other thing with COVID. The governor ha is putting unfunded mandates on all the towns and all the municipalities in New York State. We have to come up with policies, procedures that we have to uh, have in place in case we get another pandemic. Well, those policies and procedures also include come, you have to have um, PPEs. So we're going to have to buy the PPEs that we didn't have to plan for. That has to be done by April 1st. Yeah. The some of these things are out of our control. But you're talking, you know, I just went through uh, a few things there. We're talking $100,000 to $130,000 that wasn't budgeted for or planned for in the past that we're going to have to do that moving forward. So where's that money going to come from? These are things that has to be done now. We're going to have to cut some cost. Where are we going to cut them? That's what we're in the middle of right now, you know, trying to figure out where we're going to cut the cost. And I'm sure... I have some ideas of where it should come from or where we could uh, get the money, but I'm sure that the other um, counselors are going to have differing ideas than me. So that's where we have to come to consensus and determine, okay, where are we going to take it from? But it's going to have to come from somewhere. Other than that, we're going to have to increase taxes. I gave the, um, the board a, 0 a budget with a 0% increase in it. So now that's the budget that we're starting with. So now we're gonna either have to, in order to keep it there, we're gonna have to cut some services, cut some programs, cut from other areas of the budget in order to keep it at zero. And that's, that's my objective. I don't know if I can do it because some of these things are, are coming up at the uh, 10th hour here that I didn't even know about you know, throughout the year. A lot has to do with COVID because we couldn't meet and things like that, but uh, you know, the fact of the matter is we have a lot of costs that weren't that weren't planned for in the past, but we're going to have to plan for them in the future. So where are they going to come from? So <laughs> they're going to come from somewhere, um, but uh, uh, or we're going to have to increase taxes. And I don't want to do that. I, I do not want to increase taxes. You have 30 million people out of work. You have a lot of people in um, the town of Lysander that are, uh, you know, some some of their family members have uh 
uh, uh, lost uh, time in their jobs. Some have been laid off. So I, I don't want to do that this year. Now, in saying that, moving forward, there's going to have to be in the next up to 10 years, there's going to have to be small incremental increases in our taxes in order to do the proper planning that we need to do moving forward. Now, if you do it in small incremental uh, increases, you can plan for them. And then hopefully by the time you get to 10 years, you don't have these ups and downs that we have had in the, in the past. We can, we can keep it pretty steady, but that has, the only way that we can do that is to set up reserves for things like the roof, things like generators, things like computer systems, because computers are only good for 10 or 12 years. So we're gonna, even though we just replaced them all, now we have to do some, uh, planning for the future to replace them again in 12 years. Well, what are we going to do? We got to set up a reserve. Well, where do you get the money from? You're going to have to put the money away. Now, the nice thing about the reserves, if you put the money in the reserves for specific things like a roof, we cannot use that for anything other than the roof. The only way that we could use it in an emergency, a catastrophic uh, situation, we have to put it up for a referendum. Then we could, uh, I believe that's the process. Then the, the, um, community would say, okay, you can take some of this money out of the reserves that you have and use it for this other project. But it's not that easy. And I think that's what we have to do because I think what, what we need to do is put that money away so that, that uh, you know, when we, when we decide, oh, we got this project that we want to use, we can't touch it. So we, we have it put away for specific things. And that's one of the things that I'm going to be moving towards in the next couple of years. No, I, I think that's smart. I, um, you know, I, I don't know if we'll end up getting the Main Street Grant Project money, which I'm I lost you. I can't hear you now. You can't hear me? Yeah, I can't hear you. All right. Well, we're, we're going to take a, um, we'll call I it. I see you're talking. You, okay. <laughs> so I think we got most of the information that we needed from Bob. Um, if you guys have any additional questions on what he was saying, if you could just, um, you know, message either call in the town or message me here at Hard Home and Community and I'll get that information out to him. Everybody have a great day.